What is up guys, welcome to Diving Garage. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to save some money and stop overpaying for those EFI sensors. Let's dive in. And today we're gonna to be working on a fuel pressure system on my blown 671 small block here. And I have a sensor in there, but it's junk, so it's coming out. Now when you buy these aftermarket EFI systems, it comes with um, the ability to monitor anything you want under the sun. Um, if anything from tire pressure to fuel pressure to uh, G-force tracking, like you name it, you can monitor it. Now in the Super Sniper system, we get a few slots where we can monitor a few things. And oddly enough, it doesn't come with an oil pressure sensor in the kit. I find that pretty odd, but that's just, that's just the way it is. So you have to add one. And the system I'm gonna be showing you today, Irish, I'm already actually running on the oil system, but uh, I wanted to put it on the fuel, fuel system too. And this sensor I'm taking off here, I got on the Amazons. And nothing wrong with getting stuff on Amazon, just this one specifically, well, it sucks. Nothing like spilling fuel everywhere. All right, now that we've got the old sensor out, still spilling fuel everywhere, I'm gonna go show you what we're putting in. And this here is what we're gonna be using today. First up, we got an adapter to go from uh, one inch MPT to the uh, oil pressure sensor we're gonna be using. And then we have the oil pressure sensor itself. All right, so what's gonna happen is this uh, adapter here this 1 8 MPT uh, port is gonna go into the fuel T that I just took that other sensor out of, and then this sensor is gonna go into this. And this sensor, uh, I'll give you a part number, and I'll put links in the description below. Uh, it's just a Dorman part, 926040, and this sensor is for, say, like a 2007, 2010 uh, Chevy Silverado, uh, and a bunch of other cars, I'm sure. That's just a, the car I knew that this fit. Um, so, like I said, it's gonna go into the fuel rail, and this is gonna go into there, and then Bob's your uncle. I mean, it's, it's literally that easy. All right, step one on this, I'm gonna put a little bit of Teflon tape. I don't know if this is required, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just because I think we all do. We can't help when we put sensors and things like that in. We gotta put something on it, whether it's the Pope Dope or the uh, <laughs> Teflon tape here. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on there to make sure we get a good seal, because I don't want this, this leaking and then falling down onto the hot running engine <laughs> and then causing a fire. That's the opposite of what we're going for here. It's really close to my carb scoop here. It'll be all right. All right, that feels good. And now, the actual sensor itself, it has this uh, crusher washer and it's got a little bit of sealant on there. I'm gonna add just a bit more and then get this on there. Now, let's see. I might have to adjust the angle of my rail here. Looks like I will. All right, let me go grab a a uh, and wrench right quick. Just gonna give this a little bit more room. That should be good right there. All right, that's tight. That'll work. There we go. So the only deal about this is that because it's from a modern vehicle, you know you got to use a special tool to put it on, but it's okay. Uh, it's this guy right here, it's just an oil sensor socket. He's readily available. I think I even got this at uh, AutoZone years back, but these are very easy to get. And then it just goes right over there and tighten her down. All right, now if you open up your Holly software, we can get a config opened up and we can get this programmed in real easy. All right, this is Hank's latest tune. I have um, the config from uh, EFI System Pro. And don't forget to use code DIG20 at checkout for $20 off your next tune. And what we can do is going over to the sensors tab. And I have the fuel already on um, this sensor number two here. And uh, we're gonna start from the top here. So we're, of course, we wanna make sure it's enabled. And then you can name it, whatever you wanna name it. Uh, fuel pressure works for me. And then you can do decimal points if you really want, but whole numbers is fine with me. Whatever uh, units you're gonna use. And then I like to use the custom pressure. To me, that's that's the way that it works the best. And then whatever uh, sensor you have this, what it, the sensor you have wired up to the harness is what you need to put here. So I have it on input number four, so that's what it's gonna be. So to start it off, we're gonna go from zero, and we're gonna end this at 135. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift, select all, and we're gonna fill row values. And so that way it makes it a nice even uh, progression. And this stuff is optional, it's completely up to you. If you wanna uh, enable low warnings for low fuel pressure, high warnings, high fuel pressure, um, this, this, set it, this section here is uh, your, your choice. 
and then we're gonna come down. If you wanna do a safety, like say fuel pressure goes below, I don't know, 40 PSI, I'll just show you exactly. Uh, goes below, let's just say it goes below 40 PSI for um, two seconds. We want to cut ignition. It's just an example, um, but that's what you can do. All right, and then this is a section that's the most important. So for, let's start at the top, for calibration curve, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go zero to 135. Select all and then uh, right click to go row values. There we go. And then for voltage, we're gonna go from half a volt to four and a half, which is good. As, I, as you can see here, this is a little screwed up and that was my bad. Um, so if you come over here to uh, the last cell, do type in 135 and then hit enter then it'll change your scaling so then you can select all then right click and then hit fill row values and you should get a nice uh, straight linear progression so that this sensor is gonna um, be calibrated from zero all the way to 135 nice linear progression and the voltage is gonna be half a volt all the way to four and a half volts and if these values are empty make just make sure you do the same thing so four and a half four and a half here Select all, fill row values. So mine was already good to go, so nothing really changed there. And that is really it. So programming this uh, into the Holly is really, really easy. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to save this, load it up to the truck, and then um, we're gonna prime the system to, so we can watch the uh, fuel pressure. All right, now I'm getting the truck fired up right now. I'm gonna make sure I am synced. Yup, good to go. Make sure I'm linked. Perfect. And let's check a look at some data. And as you can see here, uh, we just we have some fuel pressure, and that's because what the Holly does is it uh, fires up the fuel pump to prime the system, and then turns it off. Um, so now it's creeping back down, but that's okay. That's what it's supposed to do. So now let's get the truck fired up, and let's see what happens. There we go. Okay, now watch right here where my mouth is. Perfect. You can see it going from roughly 65 to 70, it's more in that range. And if we want to take a closer look, we can do a quick log. And check it out. Other than that, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. No leaks. Everything's working exactly like it's supposed to. Be. Perfect. So here's a log that we just took, and let's make sure our fuel pester is engaged. And there it is, that green line. Let me turn off this junk here. So you can see here, this is a fuel pressure. So it's bouncing around, but that's kind of that's what it does because you're measuring from the rail. Uh, it fluctuates, you know, it's not going to be just solid, but overall it's doing good. Hanging out around, I don't know, average is what, 65? Yep, that's perfectly fine. So it's working that easy, guys. A sensor like this could easily go for 130 up to $160 each. So let's go over the parts that we spent today and tell you how much you saved. So this Dorman sensor that we used right here, again, part number was $27. And this adapter from ICT Billet. I think it was like 19.95. So for 50 bucks, you could have a base for your uh, sensor, the actual sensor, and then guess what? When this dies, this thing is still good. So if it, if it dies, which it'll probably last a long time, it's only $27. And then you can get yourself another one because this is good to go, and you're back up and running. As where if this dies, now you're down 150, 160 bucks. Not cool. All right, guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope now you can save some money on your EFI system sensors. You've spent enough, so it's time to save some money. Well, guys, if you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and get out there and dive your next project. Catch you next time.